Thomas Winship wrote, If the earth be the globe of popular belief, it is very evident that in cutting a canal, an allowance must be made for the curvature of the globe, which allowance would correspond to the square of the distance multiplied by eight inches. From the age of 5th August 1892, I extract the following. The German emperor performed the ceremony of opening the gates of the Baltic and North Sea Canal in the spring of 1891. The canal starts at Holtenau on the south side of Kiel Bay and joins the Elbe 15 miles above its mouth. It is 61 miles long, 200 feet wide at the surface and 85 feet at the bottom, the depth being 28 feet. No locks are required as the surface of the two seas is level. Let those who believe it is the practice for surveyors to make allowance for curvature ponder over the following from the Manchester Ship Canal Company, Earth Review, October 1893. It is customary in railway and canal constructions for all levels to be referred to a datum which is nominally horizontal and is so shown on all sections. It is not the practice in laying out public works to make allowances for the curvature of the earth. The London and Northwestern Railway forms a straight line 180 miles long between London and Liverpool. The railroad's highest point midway at Birmingham Station is only 240 feet above sea level. If the world were actually a globe, however, curveting 8 inches per mile squared, the 180 mile stretch of rail would form an arc with the center point at Birmingham raising a full 5,400 feet above London and Liverpool adding the station's actual height, 240 feet, to its theoretical inclination, 5,400 feet, gives 5,640 feet as the rail's necessary height on a globe earth, more than a thousand feet taller than Ben Nevis, the tallest mountain in Great Britain. Thomas Winship wrote, In projecting railways on a globe, the datum line would be the arc of a circle corresponding to the latitude of the place. That the datum line for the railway projections is always a horizontal line proves that the general configuration of the world is horizontal. To support the globe theory, the gentlemen of the observatories should call upon the surveyor to prove that he allows the necessary amount for curvature. But this is what the learned men dare not do, as it is well known that the allowance for the supposed curvature is never made. David Wardlaw Scott wrote, In a long line like that of the Great Pacific Railway, extending across North America, the supposed curvature would, of course, be proportionally great, extending to many miles in height, but not one inch was allowed by the engineers for curvature during the whole course of the construction of that vast line of railway. And if we think of it, how could it be otherwise? All railway metals must of necessity be straight, for how could any engine or carriage run with safety on a convex surface? J. C. Bourne, in his book, the history of the Great Western Railway stated that the entire original English railroad, more than 118 miles long, that the whole line with the exception of the inclined planes may be regarded practically as level. The British Parliament session in 1862 that approved its construction recorded in order number 44 for the proposed railway that the section be drawn to the same horizontal scale as the plan and to a vertical scale of not less than one inch to every one hundred feet, and shall show the surface of the ground marked on the plan, the intended level of the proposed work, the height of every embankment, and the depth of every cutting, and a datum horizontal line which shall be the same throughout the whole length of the work. Thomas Winship wrote, 118 miles of level railway, and yet the surface on which it is projected a globe? Impossible. It cannot be. Early in 1898, I met a Mr. Hughes, chief officer of the steamer City of Lincoln. This gentleman told me he had projected thousands of miles of level railway in South America and never heard of any allowance for curvature being made. On one occasion, he surveyed over 1,000 miles of railway, which was a perfect straight line all the way. It is well known that in the Argentine Republic and other parts of South America, there are railways thousands of miles long, without curve or gradient. In projecting railways, the world is acknowledged to be a plane, and if it were a globe, the rules of projection have yet to be discovered. Level railways prove a level world, to the utter confusion of the globular school of impractical men with high salaries and little brains, that in all surveys no allowance is made for curvature, which would be a necessity on a globe, that a horizontal line is in every case the datum line, 
the same line being continuous throughout the whole length of the work, and that the theodolite cuts a line at equal altitudes on either side of it, which altitude is the same as that of the instrument, clearly proves to those who will accept proof when it is furnished that the world is a plane and not a globe.